So this is where I'd like to start fishing. I like to do stream fishing and to get to the stream sometimes you have to go through some cornfields and forests and this is the start. As you can see this used to be a gravel pit and then they've filled it all in and there's a depression down there with quite a big lake. So now we're going to, that's where we came from out there. And now we're going to go into the forest and hopefully come to the stream eventually. You know, about 70 years ago, I can hear my dad talking to my mom saying, Grace, I think the boy wants to go fishing. Now, I didn't know I wanted to go fishing, but I sure didn't hesitate getting ready, get my stuff ready and get in the car and have a good day fishing. Actually, there's not a bad day for fishing in any attempt. Here's another section where very dark and lots of trails for, for the deer. Well, I just heard a stork or a heron and I just saw the tail of a Virginia whitetail. So this is the reason when you take a look through this stuff, this is the reason I now wear hip, hip waders. This is called stinging nettle. If I didn't have my hip waders on, the water on the stinging nettle, uh, the, the nettles would go right through my pants and it would be a very itchy, uncomfortable walk. So these long boots, as long as I watch for the logs, the long boots uh, prevent me from getting itchy. It's quite a good, quite a good thing to have on. Oh, I can smell the water. We're getting here. We're getting here. Again, very high weeds, parsley, and folks there's the stream and there's a huge beaver that i can just see now i'm not sure if you guys can see it but you can see the ripples in the water and it's going to where i was going to fish well i'll tell you there's probably a 20 22 inch brown trout that just went from my right to the left and i sure hope that gets on a video sometime today well i just saw a big brown go, and i think we might have a brown trout on well, there's the beaver and there's the brown trout. So the beaver is more interested in what we have at the moment. Again, this is a beauty hole here. Actually fishing with a, with a worm and no sinker at the time. I think uh, the worm should go down to the bottom. Uh, there are some chub or shiners, whatever you call, and they're worrying the worm, which is okay because if a big brown sees that uh, there are chub around something, the big brown will eventually come in and scare everybody away and take what's there to be eaten. Hopefully it's on the end of our line. So I just want you to know that fishing is all just not about catching fish. Fishing is about making some mistakes and getting your line all tangled. As a big brown just swims by us once more. So we'll be back in a minute. Let him play. We've got a big brown on. Nice sitting there. He's taking out line. You can see him. I hope you can see him. We're going to just hold on to this for a second. It's a beauty. It's probably 18, 20 inches. We'll just let him play himself out. I do CPR. Catch, photo, and release. So at the moment, we're at, we're at sea. Uh, it looks pretty well caught, but you never know. We're not going to let him get into the, uh, into the woods. Uh, if he gets under the brush, we're in big trouble. That's a good size. That's a good size trout. That's a good size trout. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the shallow into the shallow water. He's flashing around here. That's a great brown trout. That's a great brown trout. I'm going to try and see what we can do here. Maybe we can scoop him up onto land. Boy, what a great brown trout. Probably, again, 16, 18, looks fat. We're gonna scoop. We're gonna scoop. Nice, nice fish. Nice fish. Oh, wow. Sure hope you can see that, because I can see that. That is a great brown trout. Great brown trout in little streams, right? You just think you're never gonna see anything. And all of a sudden, a big brown trout like this goes. We're gonna 
Let's see what we can do here. I'll get the pliers out. I'll get a measuring stick uh, just offhand. Whatever that is. 18 maybe. 20 inch brown trout. What a beauty. What a beauty. Again, what it's amazing what you can catch with a size 18. There we go. I've, I've got them. I'm going to get water. Again, what a what a beauty fish. This is the release part. I'm going to actually put them in the water now and start uh, whoop, and start going back and forth. Get some oxygen through those gills. And I'm pretty sure he'll be okay. Great fish. Great fish. Sneaky fish. Sneaky fish. Living with brown trout. Living with with living with the beaver. So what we tried for this brown trout, again I make no apologies. I fish with chub tail or I fish with with uh, um, worms. Uh, big guys like this like things on the ground so sometimes a little sinker to get the food down where it would attack. And uh, great fish. Great fish. We'll just do this for as ever long as it takes for him to to decide it's time to go and the strength will take it out of my body there's no blood around again beauty fish doesn't want to go on its on its back with its tummy up which means that it's alive and healthy so we'll just sit and wait for this and however long it takes for him to decide he wants to leave again the water color is absolutely wonderful it's 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 tea color and it's T color and, and it can't see us basically and we can't see it and that fish feels really comfortable really comfortable probably too comfortable love the color of the browns love those orange red spots my dad used to call these German browns I don't know why maybe they came from Germany I guess eventually or a, a stock but these are these are natural fish and it's a beauty fish if you were to go past the road where the where the bridge is there's very little water and you'd think my goodness there's no fish in here and so people don't stop and fish and that's why there are these big fish here just a beautiful specimen again you can see where i am you can see the hole up there again after a big rain fish feels comfortable I'm pretty sure there's another big guy or girl in here. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Oh, getting a little rambunctious, wants to go. Again, I'll just wait, turn it where it doesn't want to go. And I don't think you can see that. There he goes, off he goes. There you go. What a beautiful fish. And you know why I catch photo release? That fish may be on the end of the line in a week again. Well, I'm lying, maybe in two days when I want to come back here. Again, what a beauty place. What a great day for fishing. Any day is great. But the water is perfect. There are some nice holes. And as I said, if you looked at the bridge, you'd think, boy, there's no fish here. And as I said, that's why there are fish here. Just love it. I've fished here for 40 years and never, ever seen anybody down as far as I fish now. Just doesn't happen because the water's too shallow up by the bridge. And that's great. So what I'm doing here is I'm fishing the lure, going down in front of a nice deep hole, retrieving it. And it's a beautiful retrieval and there is absolutely no fish two or three feet behind it. As I said, that's where I look. I don't look at the, at the lure. I look at what hopefully is coming behind it and nothing. So I move on to another hole. So as you can see, I'm just throwing a lure up and watching two feet behind to see if anybody... Oh, there's a nice... I think that's a... Oh, nice jump. Nice jump. Looks like a little bass. A little uh, smallmouth. Smallmouth. That They come up from the bigger river. And they're the actually pretty aggressive things. They, they go for the food before the trout do. So there's mom still there. Kit went away up there, and there may be another one here. Usually they have two or three kits. Uh, 
the little baby is just saying, oh, I'm staying away. And mom's just going over now to, uh, I think probably we'll, we'll leave this hole. It's been, oh, there she goes. It's been a great hole, a great day. Uh, beautiful brown. That's, that's, that's the only thing I fish. Uh, it's a great time to be out.